Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. The Outdoor Adventure Series celebrates individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote exploration, stewardship, conservation, access, and enjoyment of the outdoors. Our guest today is Ed Arnett. Ed has been a wildlife biologist, a researcher, conservationist, and educator for more than 30 years. He's also worked in conservation policy and communications in the last decade. These days when he's got some time on his hands, he is also the CEO at the Wildlife Society. And I had the pleasure of meeting Ed this past May, seems like so long ago, at the annual conference of the Outdoor Writers Association of America. And I loved kind of listening to Ed, hearing his point of view, and I thought this is, guy is going to be a perfect guest on the podcast. So, Ed, thank you for joining us on the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Great to see you again, Howard, and a uh, real pleasure to be on. Fantastic. Now, first of all, I, I want to get, obviously, into the Wildlife Society, but I'd love if you could, a yeah, 30,000-foot view or so, is to provide our listeners with, with a little background about your work and how you got into wildlife biology research, because this is really, you kind of look back and we often can see the breadcrumbs. Sometimes we see those breadcrumbs stopped and another set of breadcrumbs started a little farther along. So tell us a little bit about your story. Sure. And, uh, but all kind of began when I was a kid, uh, my, my grandfather took me hunting and fishing as most grandfathers do, or many do. I just had a, a strong love for animals, and I think you and I are both of the age. We remember that show called uh, Wild Kingdom, hosted by Marlon Perkins and oh, yeah. uh, Jim Fowler and others, and that had an enormous influence on me. I watched that religiously every time it came on, and uh, and it just guarded my love for for wildlife and. And I, I I didn't know what to call what those folks were doing, but I said I want to do that. And as I entered into high school, it started to develop in my mind. I never deviated. I never said I wanted to be a fireman or a veterinarian or, or anything else as a kid. It's like, I want to do what Marlon Perkins and mainly Jim Fowler. Marlon did all the narrating and sat in the truck and the boat, as we all know, while Jim and others did the hard work. But um, that's what really got it going. And then just that love of the outdoors, spending time outside with my grandfather and on my own as well hunting and fishing and just growing that love for nature. So I, I right away left high school and went right into college seeking degrees in natural resources management, wildlife management, and, and um, yeah, went through uh, doctorate work, the master's in doctor work uh, and got into the wildlife research side of things. But that's how I kind of garnered the desire and I've, I've never looked back. I've always wanted to be a biologist now that I know what to call it and, and have always been so in different, in different kinds of arenas, I guess I'll call it, or sub sectors of the profession, done some management work, church work, conservation work with NGOs and, and policy work as well. So got a lot of breadth in my resume and I've uh, loved every minute of it. I love it. It's as I jokingly like to say, we've been on a lot of different rodeos, so it sounds <laughs> like uh, that for you. I lo love to circle back if we could and unpack a couple of the items that you shared. First, I'm always amazed when my guest shares how they first got started and the fact that your grandfather took you out yeah. and, and it introduced you to the outdoors and the activities, whether it be hunting, fishing, could have been hiking for that matter, biking. Sure. And yeah. I had the pleasure uh, and the fortune of my, my dad taking me out. My grandfather was a little uh, older and he had his issues, but the, it's funny, his, his side of the family, they owned a fish market. And I thought that, well, that would have been cool. At least I would have been closer to the fishing and the angling. Right. <laughs> but uh, so you, you, you spent some time out there. Where, by the way, where did you grow up? I grew up in South Central Illinois in a small farming community. We worked on a farm per se, but we don't. I, I worked on a farm my whole life, and uh, and in some way, shape, or more, my some way, shape, or form, throughout uh, all the way to high school, and knew all the local farmers, and uh, so just that classic small Midwestern town kind okay. of community, and and 
we were fortunate because we could just walk out the backyard almost literally uh, and you were right there in in nature and um and i knew we knew all, my grandfather was a gas truck driver he, he drove for standard oil and delivered fuel to all these farmers so we knew them all so it was very easy and back in those days pretty easy to get permission just by knocking on the door but um you can still do that a little bit today, but it, it was really easy when I said, Hey, I'm, I'm, uh, the grandson of, of your guest, of your fuel deliver. <laughs> so easy to find places to go recreate and have fun and enjoy, enjoy the outdoors. That's great. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm envious as well, because I never had that. And, uh, with just it, it I, I kind of see that thread over and over again as I have a uh, chat with the guests. Now, where did you go to uh, school to get your degrees? So it's a long story, and I will not bore your audience as to why <laughs> all the reasons behind it, but I jumped right to Colorado to a small school on the West Slope uh, called Colorado Mountain College. Okay. Um, I started researching where to go to school and I knew I didn't want to do it in Illinois. I wanted to go out wet. My great, I'll be back up just a little bit. When my grandfather retired from that job, he and grandma bought a, they did what classic retirees did at that time. They bought a, a new truck and a fifth wheel trailer and they went off to, and they, uh, traveled the, the West and the North way. They went all over the place and then they snowbirded down in Texas. So. I got to go with them for about three months after school was out in that in the summer of 73. And we went to Yellowstone. We went, uh, no, the summer of 75 and we went to Yellowstone. We hit a bunch of national parks, but we did spend one month in Colorado and I loved it. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother's cousin lived in Rifle and I found this little school in Glenwood, which is really close. And I thought, well, if I'm going to move so far away from home, at least I've got a family member reasonably close. I saw him maybe twice in two years. Once right. I got out there, it was game on and, uh, I was just doing things all the time, but that was a two year degree. Then I went to Montana state university, got a bachelor's degree there, wound up doing my master's at the university of Wyoming, worked on bighorn sheep and habitat relationships, I took a hiatus and worked for 10 or 11 years. And then went back and finished my doctorate as, a, as an older student back in, in, in Oregon state. Okay. Well, you've hit the, uh, the big states. I mean, Illinois, Colorado, Montana, <laughs> Wyoming, uh, Oregon. I'm like, that's pretty good. I, I used to write papers when I was in elementary school about Colorado. And I know one day I'm going to end up back there. I don't know where, yeah. but I'll end up in Colorado, <laughs> which is not a bad thing because Nevada with the water, who knows? Yeah. So Nevada is a nice state though. Oh it's, yeah. Oh, great yeah. places. I mean, I you, Nevada. If you can think of Nevada ex outside of the casinos and downtown, right. it is beautiful. It's amazing. It's, the sagebrush yeah. ecosystem is a stunning landscape and ecosystem. Unfortunately, the drought and fires have altered it quite a bit. But yeah, no, if you like you say, if you can get out of Reno and the Vegas area, it, it's absolutely amazing out, out in, well, the, in the ecosystems. Definitely. Now, as you began to cultivate and really maybe it's clarify your interest and in what you were passionate about was it more on the biology side the research the public policy how did you begin to kind of hone where your expertise was going to go yeah back to back to the marlon perkins jim fowler uh, uh, story i really wanted to do the field work again mm -hmm. when you're of that age i really didn't know what that when i what you called it how to get into it. I was just so naive, but I knew I wanted to study animals and handle them, and research their behavior and habitat patterns and all that stuff. And that's where I did start out. I, I, um, was really in the field biology field research side of things early on. Well, after I got my master's degree, I, my first job was, well, my very, very first job in the whole profession was as a forestry technician in 1983. And I decided I didn't want to be a forester. I still had the option of going any number of paths because yeah. I just got a natural resource degree. We, I could have gone any number of directions, but I really wanted to follow that wildlife thread. But I did work in the forest sector for a while just, and it's a good, that's a good career too. But when I really dug in deep after my master's degree, I was mostly a management and a research biologist for a long while before I entered into more of the. Administration, I would call it because I kind of moved up in one NGO and 
right. was overseeing programs, so became more of an, an administrator than a scientist, an active practicing scientist. But then I I, I morphed into the policy side of okay. the world with another NGO, and um, and now in my current job, I oversee the organization of the, called the Wildlife Society, which is the professional society of wildlife professionals. So I oversee a little bit of everything. <laughs> sure, policy administration, our our journals, and all kinds of. Of things. 